Hello and welcome back to the third part of this little tutorial series. Last time we learned uh, what colors actually are when we're talking about um, computer graphics. So today I'm gonna talk about how to apply this. So how do we use our knowledge and well apply it to our own images? And that means we are going to talk about color composition. I won't talk about um, classical color composition like um, color harmonies. If you're interested into that, I really recommend you the video by Andrew Price, which is really, really good and shows some great examples. So definitely check that out. But I want to talk about color composition in a way that maybe makes a bit more sense to me and maybe it will to you. So what's the goal of color composition? I see um, two goals that I personally want to achieve in my images. First of all, I want to draw the viewer's attention um, to either uh, tell a story or show some pretty detail, it doesn't matter, just to point the viewer's focus into a certain direction. And the second goal I have is well, to, to create a certain harmony and give the image a certain feeling that I want to show to the viewer. So how can we influence the viewer's attention? Well, there are actually several ways to do that. Um, if you have looked at this image, you probably looked at this green dot. It's, it's rather obvious because this dot is different. So what we can learn from this is that our eye is always seeking for a difference. So it's seeking for contrast. So if we want to draw the viewer's attention, we need to create some contrast. And for that, our color theory comes in quite neatly because we can create um, contrast either in a hue. Here it is the hue. So you have red against green, which is well, a complementary contrast. Um, but you can also use um, the value. So you have a very dark or very bright color. Um, and the third um, idea is that you play with the saturation. For example, you have a very highly saturated object in a low saturated scene that will um, yeah, be pretty visible to the viewer. To explain this a bit more, I want to show you three of my artworks and see how it works there. But I really tell you, um, look at images, even paintings. Painters do a really, really good job on this. And I will concentrate on like black and white images because this is about the value and not the saturation or the color. So I will separate it a bit and only talk about one of them. But the uh, same rule always apply to the others as well, of course. So this is a scene I did um, a while back ago. It is about an apocalyptic scene. There we go. Um, and we have this car in the center that you can see over here. You can see that it is really the brightest spot because overall it is a nighttime scene. It is a bit darker and when well, you don't see that much. So I brightened this area pretty much up and well, edit this dark spot as well so that we have a very bright spot that you immediately look at. And yeah, that is that is pretty good. Um, you can also blur the image and look again, which sometimes really helps. And now you really see that this is by far the brightest spot on the image. Next one, um, my Halloween scene, um, pretty interesting. Um, Overall, we have, if I blur this out, this like darker bottom part and the brighter top part. But there's this building that interferes with um, balance, which essentially draws the attention to the um, building. And especially this very bright spot down here draws our attention. <laughs> because um, this spot is so bright and it is surrounded by a dark area and that really helps to draw the attention closer to this spot but also like to this area because it's pretty bright. 
So yes, that's that's the um, focal point that you can set. And last one is actually even more interesting because if you blur this out, the main focus is obviously in the center. But normally these buildings um, don't even have white walls. Like this is a scene from Hamburg, um, which is a city in Germany. Um, but these buildings are normally um, well red all over the place, so it would be gray from top to the bottom. But I decided to to raise the attention a bit more, so I added this brighter line in the image, and in its center there's this really bright spot with the uh, quite white walls. Okay, now you probably understand how to control the focal point using well, a bit of color contrast, but how do we influence the overall feeling that an image gives us? Well, it rather depends on the overall choice of hue, saturation or value and the amount of contrast each of those has. For example, if we talk about saturation, if something is really saturated, it is really happy, vivid and feels new, um, but desaturated feels rather sad, dead and old. So if you keep the um, saturation consistently up, it will be a pretty happy scene, like a candy land or something. Um, but if you want to do a graveyard or something like that, make it desaturated. So the choice of um, saturation is really important. And I personally tend to keep it um, rather unified, so I have a rather consistent saturation but um, do whatever pleases you the most. Then there's also color symbols, like green is like nature and natural and that kind of stuff, or red is anger or love. So it, it really um, is fixed to some certain feelings right from the beginning. So um, also keep those in mind. The next one is light. Um, Light obviously influences the color our objects have in the scene, but it also really creates a very, very strong feeling. So light yellow, um, quite bright light um, from above, feels very natural, feels real, um, while strong blue light, very saturated blue light, and like a darker scene, um, feels rather surreal or dreamy even. Um, and for example, green light might look some a bit more unpleasant or poisonous in a way. So it it really depends on the scene. And just just look at your image and think, how does this feel? What situation is this? Um, don't always just use white light. Play around with it. Just create a nice situation. Okay. And the last point is warm and cold colors. Um, for example, this um, little castle I made. Normally, I mean, it's in the mountains. The mountains would be bluish, and you probably would have greenish grass, and it would be quite cold because blue, green, purple, those colors are cold. All the colors that are placed around the blue. And the colors placed around red are well considered to be warmer. And well, in the beginning, I had this image to be really bluish, but I decided to switch it to brown, orangish tones. And that really changed the feeling of the image, and I'm really pleased with this. So, how does this fit into um, my personal workflow? Well, as you can see here, let's uh, stop this. As you can see here, um, at the beginning and for a very long time, because this image is pretty um, pretty far done, um, I just keep realistic colors. Like this um, mosque actually has blue roofs, that's fine. And the houses around it have well, reddish, Oops, because that's just the color they have in uh, well reality. So 
for the first part of my workflow, I normally choose to maintain natural colors. But then, like after a half or two thirds of the time, um, I start thinking how to change the colors, how to well adjust them to my needs. And for example, um, in this image, I chose to make it colder. I don't really know why, but I just felt like it. <laughs> um, you just need to develop a certain feeling for situations like this. I mean, this these colors could actually fit like a castle in the mountains. This would be way more appropriate than a mosque, but I don't know. I just wanted it to look this way. So think about your image and don't think about how do the colors look in real life? But sometimes just mix them up randomly. Just add some interesting color peaks. And that will sometimes give pretty dumb results, <laughs> of course, but uh, sometimes also give really interesting and nice results. Uh, or for example, this image that I did. Um, this is a church from Norway and these colors are pretty close to like uh, reality because it's like blue sky and greenish valleys but I wanted it to be a bit spookier somehow so I switched to well yellowish um, purplish um, colors so do consider different colors I mean a purple sky that's, that's nonsense there's, there's no such thing in reality like a really purple sky. Um, but sometimes it just looks right. So um, yeah, consider um, different colors. Just mix them up randomly and see how it goes. Now in the end, I want to show you three different websites that could support you with your color choice. Um, the first one is uh, paletton.com and this is really nice for color harmonies. Of course you can actually like choose a color and this is like monochromatic um, color scheme and it will well generate a lot of colors based on your main color and um, will give you some ideas what colors you could add or what colors you could change in your scene. Um, they have like monochromatic and triangular and all these really nice um, color harmonies that always go fine with each other. So yeah, just, just try those out. Um, it's pretty fun to use. Um, the second website is Coolers, which is also really, really interesting. And in coolers, you can, well, actually like um, lock certain colors or change them and it will automatically generate some, some interesting results based on that. So if you have like a main color that you want to um, work create and to get some new colors that might fit it. Um, this is also a really nice website. It doesn't give you that much freedom, I guess, but it's simple and it, it just works. And the last one is colorhunt.co. This is really, really interesting because it's just a <laughs> website with um, combinations of four different colors. But this can be pretty inspirational. Like I could see maybe a, a greenish grassland with some bluish, um, well, lakes or something and a really dark sky or something. I, I don't know. Just just look at these colors and maybe you could, could see a scene working with it. Um, it's just a pretty nice website. I don't tend to use these websites, to be honest with you. Of course, I normally um, just try what works, but these are 
pretty helpful sites if you want to get started with colors and want to get a feeling for um, what works fine together.